Welcome to the Callaway Golf Podcast, part of the Callaway Podcast Network. Here's your host, Jeff Newbarth. That's like the nicest thing Amanda's ever said to me. Normally when she does this, Doc, there's like a little snarky remark or something that she throws in there. I appreciate that, Amanda. What's going on? Welcome to the Callaway Golf Podcast. Thanks very much. So today, uh, as Twitter has been buzzing, people can ask you anything about the new Big Bertha B21 in stores today. Yeah. If you're one of the first 1,000 customers, you get to go buy it. That's awesome. It's yeah. pretty exciting. Yeah, I know. We're very excited about this product. Yeah, so we're going to take your questions. So hit us up on uh, either Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. And Jen and Trevor and everyone in the background will be sending questions to this computer here. So if I'm looking down, I'm not being rude to you. <laughs> I will ask you the questions. You will answer the questions. But first, Got it. Um, did you miss the PGA Tour? Because, I mean, we had a pretty massive off season. You know, the, yeah. the Tour Championship ended on Monday. Yeah. And uh, we had to wait Tuesday. Yeah. And Wednesday. And they're back. <laughs> were, were you missing it? It's part of the rhythm of our life around here, watching the, you know our staff players and yeah. getting feedback from those guys. So uh, when they were kind of actually shut down, that, that was a very different feeling around here. Yeah, two, two full um, days. Two but, full days. Uh, yeah, we do uh, still see a, a lot of them around here. We've had some uh, opportunities to do some really deep dive sessions with a, with a few of them. Good. Uh, maybe things that wouldn't have come up before. But nice. yeah, we're back. <laughs> All right. Well, a couple things to... Uh, uh, as public service announcements, I don't know if it's really public service announcements or not, but uh, the NA uh, is going on as well. It is. Uh, major championship, a couple hours away in the desert. Mm-hmm. God, it's got to be hot out there. Oh, yeah, I think 107 they're predicting. Yeah, like yeah. That. I'm glad we're not playing there. But what's really exciting about this event in terms of, uh, from our standpoint at Callaway, we have seven staffers, I believe, in the field. And mm-hmm. also, have you seen the staff bags that the ladies are playing with? I have not, no. Oh, my goodness. Well, all you got to do is go on Twitter, okay. which has been buzzing with you, um, <laughs> but you can see these staff bags, and uh, Jen may get mad at me not for this. I don't know if the post is up yet or not, but it's going to be up soon. You can win one of these. Oh, fabulous. So these are the actual staff bags that uh, the LPJ professionals are using uh, at their major, the head covers, right. the putter covers. They're amazing. So I know the well effort done. that goes into making those. So yeah. They are very, very well yeah, sought so, after. <laughs> so don't, don't tell the tour guys, don't tell Bjorn, but we stole one. Um, <laughs> it's hidden in one of the offices here, and Jen Jen had this great idea to put it on social. Oh, so we're going to give it away. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. And then two names to watch this afternoon. Uh, if you're listening to this early, you can watch them. They tee off a little bit later in the day. They're playing together. Will Gordon and Eric Van Royen. Nice. That's Will a, Gordon, he he hits bombs. That's a good pair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, good. We have our first question. Stephen Rogers the second. Wouldn't it be Stephen Rogers Jr.? Up to him. Okay. Um, good morning, guys. Good morning to you, Stephen. How do I fix my drive from slicing to the right? Ah, could there be a better question to kick this off? It's almost as if we planted this, which we didn't. So I I think it's a well-known fact that uh, a lot of golfers struggle with uh, hitting the ball to the right. Um, Usually a result of swinging the club, you know, a driver's a long club um, shaft lengthwise. So you swing it across the target line, outside of the target line to inside, sometimes hitting down on the ball as well combination of those two things plus variation in uh, impact location from shot to shot uh, usually means you've got a lot of variability but a lot of it goes to the right that's the slice that's the creation of the slice for most people yeah and yeah. and that's why you guys created the big birth of b21 yeah so you know you could uh, spend a fair amount of time trying to reprogram your swing um what we've decided to do with uh, Big Bertha is to try and take a different approach to saying, well, okay, you're going to swing it that way anyway. Uh, how about we put some uh, new ideas into the uh, composition of the head, into the construction of the head, some new technology combined with some new thoughts about where we uh, put the, the weight inside of the head um, and how we use the shape of the head to try and correct that, that slice for you, to take a lot of spin out of the shot primarily and uh, use that to, to straighten up the shot so that you can uh, stop hitting these shots where you're compensating a lot by aiming tons to the left just in order to find the fair the right hand edge of the fairway or something like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I mean, we've all seen it, right? The person who aims to the very, very left of the fairway and, and is hoping to hit it 150 yards straight and then 150 yards from left to right. And they say, yeah. oh, I hit it 300. And you're yeah. like, yeah, well, 150, that was slice. <laughs> it's incredibly inefficient. <laughs> and and what I think is interesting is, and, and 
look, you know, so many new people have come to the game since this this pandemic. I yeah. mean, we're not going to say anything good came out of this pandemic because that's not true. But, you know, one thing that has happened is a lot more people are playing golf. Absolutely. And yeah. a lot of these people who are playing golf are probably newer to the game. Yeah. So there couldn't be a better time for, for this entire lineup. And it's not just a driver. It's it's fairways. It's irons. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have Big Bertha Reva. That is not in stores today. So we're talking about right. BB21. We'll talk about Reva yeah. down the road. But... Don't you think for this new golfer, this is the perfect time to have this type of club? Yeah, an overriding characteristic of the whole product line is that these are are easiest to launch in the air, easiest to hit, and they provide golfers with essentially the most help for uh, for what might be a rusty swing or uh, or a en- new entrant to the game. So uh, you think about Callaway's uh, suite of technologies that we've used recently. All of those are present in the Big Bertha line, whether that's face cups and, and tungsten weighting in irons or the jailbreak technology in the driver and fairwood, all there uh, in large amounts. But the clubs are all uniquely configured relative to other clubs in the Callaway line to give you a little bit more uh, help, and in some cases a lot more help, either uh, taking spin out of the long shots or launching irons more easily. Uh, all of them are... are uh, really well positioned um, to help those people who are uh, new entrants to the game or re-entering the game. Yeah, and this is the perfect opportunity. Go to your green grass, go to your retail store today, go go try these things and yeah. just go hit them in the bay. And and I think you'll see the difference. Even uh, So the number one question that kind of comes, well, you guys have a Maverick Max in a draw setting. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between the Maverick Max and the draw setting versus Big Bertha B21? Yeah, Maverick Max is one of those sort of classically forgiving drivers. Uh, It uses large MOI in order to try and straighten out shots and retain ball speed when you don't hit the center of the face. And it uses draw bias. In other words, the center of gravity is heelward of the center of the face in order to try and reduce uh, the the slice spin component that would be present in a a slice. Um, You know, what we're doing differently in Big Bertha is we're taking an approach of saying, look, we're going to reduce overall spin. So uh, a lot of uh, people who we see in fittings enter into the fitting game, uh, they, they enter the fitting base, sorry, with uh, over 3,000 RPM of spin, some, some 4,000 RPM. Um, a lot of that uh, is inefficient ball flight, and a, and a fair amount of that overall spin is slice spin. So if we can reduce the overall spin by five, six, seven hundred RPM as we can in a big Bertha driver. Then we're uh, not only straightening shots out, we're also making them more efficient in the way that they fly. So um, big Bertha's got some advantages over uh, Maverick Max in overall spin reduction. And then it uses some changes in the geometry of the head as well to uh, influence a more left start line too. And and look, we're, we're not, you know, we wanna be clear, this driver isn't for everybody. Right. Um, which is why Maverick and Maverick Max and and, and the Sub-Zero are still in play. And, and that's what you're going to see on tour for the most part. I yeah. did find it interesting. Uh, Annie Park on the LPGA Tour mm-hmm. at the A&A is using one of the uh, the B21 heads. Oh, nice. She used it last week as well. Yep. Um, and Bjorn did mention a few other players are interested in trying it. Yep. Um, but look, you know, th- this is positioned, I don't want to say high handicapper because I hate using that. This is, this is positioned right. for someone who struggles off the tee, David yeah. Ponce. Um, <laughs> I mean, that guy can't keep it on the planet. <laughs> Yeah, and there, there's definitely a, a person that we've had in mind. We've designed more specifically for somebody who is uh, persistently struggling with losing the ball to the right. Um, and a lot of our test data shows that there are tremendous gains to be had mm-hmm. when you're that type of player and you encounter this uh, type of product and the two of them sort of come together. You'll see that in the fitting situation very easily, especially if you're at all able to hit outside. Um, but we also have seen some anecdotes from, say, our staff players who are uh, pros at golf courses around the country. And, and they're saying, hey, wait a minute, I get all of that. And yes, check that box, it all works. But for maybe a slightly wider audience too, this spin reduction capability is a known uh, recipe for distance. And uh, there are some other players benefiting from that as a result too. All right, got a couple questions. Danny or Donnie Crawford. Danny Crawford's an NBA referee. It'd be weird <laughs> if he was asking us a question. When you moved weight to the back of the driver mm. for a lower ball flight, how much is needed before it actually makes a difference? Ooh, interesting. So the amount of weight that we're moving around inside a driver head um, varies from model to model. Um, you know, if you look at the the sliding weights on an Epic Flash driver, they weigh about 17 grams, but that's not the only weight there. The, the track that the weight moves around in, it weighs about another 15 grams. So you've got about 30 plus grams there. Um, 
we've got that ability to move 30 or 40 grams around and about inside the head because the rest of the head is relatively light. The face is actually a, a pretty heavy component of the overall mass of a, of a driver. So one of the things that's interesting about Big Bertha is that there's not a huge priority in putting weight at the back. In fact, uh, we actually put a fair amount of weight forward. You know, the face is big, the face uh, weighs in a, a fair amount jailbreak is up at the front there we position other weight in the front and towards the heel of this driver and a more moderate amount towards the back so in and around that 40 or so grams that we're moving around um, the balance here in the big berth uh, is different than others in that we're actually prioritizing a slightly more forward uh, center of gravity and a lower center of gravity that's what gives us the the spin reducing characteristic while retaining some weight at the back um, to give us more sort of classic MOI numbers that uh, are good for forgiveness as well. So uh, if you want to think of Big Bertha 21, it's a uh, low spin forgive, uh, driver with forgiveness and draw bias. It, uh, yeah. And that's the sort of combination that hasn't been achieved before. And some ball speed. Definitely got ball speed. That uh, face that we use that is designed using artificial intelligence tools mm -hmm. um, is, I still believe, unique in the industry and in the way that we go about uh, the design and the manufacture of, uh, of that face. Um, something that we're very proud of that, and we have to work hard on every design to optimize it for uh, every new shape that we put together. Uh, it, it's designed in tandem with Jailbreak to optimize the performance there. So there's a couple of unique to Callaway technologies that are really important for ball speed. Yeah. What, what's the weirdest thing the supercomputer has spit out so far where you're looking at it and be like, what the heck are you talking about, supercomputer? I'm assuming you guys have a name for it. I don't want to know it, but I'm assuming you, there's you know, got to be a name. we've wrestled with that over time, and we don't actually have a name. Really? For it. No, no. Huh. I think the idea that it's anonymous is actually cooler. <laughs> that is kind of cool. Um, Supercomputer anonymous. Yep. And, huh. um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, we, we, the application of, of artificial intelligence to each of our product categories, you know, driver, fairway, hybrid, iron that we've uh, um, used it in most so far is very different. It's definitely not a cut and paste of what you learn in the driver is applicable mm -hmm. to anything else. Um, so, you know, you can see that uh, the iron faces in Big Bertha 21 are, are now starting to exhibit greater and more unusual face thickness variation than they did even in the Maverick irons just uh, earlier in uh, 2020. And that's a result of us learning how to harness that tool for the objectives of irons that are very different maybe than the objectives of a driver. So um, we're... Uh, we're serious about that that tool and the benefits that it can provide for performance for all types of golfers. In this case, you know, we're we're obviously in Big Bertha thinking of those golfers who um, don't make great contact with the ball. There's a there's a lot of variation in impact location, and in irons that tends to mean that they hit the ball low on the face or left and right of center and low on the face. So there's a lot of priority put on. Uh, generating ball speed and on using the face to control spin in the shots uh, for that type of uh, player can, too. Can I go back to Supercomputer Anonymous? Sure. Because, you know, I'm always trying to come up with ideas or things <laughs> like this. We actually have something that we released the trailer for on Sunday. I don't uh -huh. know if you got a chance to see it. Uh, Slicer's Anonymous. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah. Yes. I've so, seen some uh, of the, uh, the, the prototypes. Yeah, yeah, the second, the second uh, little trailer will go out today. Nice. Um, Kevin Nealon. Were you a Kevin Nealon fan back in the day on Saturday Night Live? I uh, yeah, I, did he? Uh, I, he had Mister. So you need to hit it by this driver, subliminal man. That was like his right. big, you know, by the driver, you know, kind of character. He yep. would buy the driver <laughs> that he used to do a lot of time. Go by the driver now. <laughs> That's gonna be his thing. Yeah. Well, that no, no, that was that was missed. That was one of his big Saturday Night Live characters. Was I in this country back in the day? When, when was he well, in? I was in the nineties. So I arrived here in ninety eight. Yeah. So he so had I by the driver. That. He had this character called Subliminal Man by okay. the driver, and he would just have a conversation by the driver and just keep telling you this thing by the driver, <laughs> and then you'd end up going, hey, you know, you'd finish conversation you know i'm gonna go by the driver we're like huh where'd you come up with that oh what an idea <laughs> yeah yeah mr spillman kevin nealon i'm gonna get that on youtube yeah. all right well i would do that i would also check out the uh slicers anonymous trailer when it drops a little bit later today the full film on the 15th 9 15 okay. u.s open week yeah september u.s open looking forward to that yeah it's gonna be kind of crazy nfl tonight too i way. know right <laughs> By the way, in case anyone hadn't got their picks in, NFL tonight, I'm going, uh, uh, we used to do picks on, we used to have a guy on the show who used to sit in that chair who used to like to gamble a lot, mm. and he used to do his, his picks every, his par five picks every week. Okay. So I'm going to help him out and uh, give him the Chiefs this week. All right. Um, here's another question from Swing It mm -hmm. on YouTube. Good name, Swing I wonder like when you had to log in to get Swing It as your, your username. That's early one. Tomorrow, I get my Big Bertha Alpha A16 delivered with Aldo Rogue 110 MSI RIP IO 60 gram shaft. 
I plan to shorten the shaft one inch. What I need to up the swing weight because the shaft is so light. So I'm going to suggest that uh, swing it. You send this question to Nate mm-hmm. Adelman on the fitting room. And let's let's let the fitting room guys handle that yeah. uh, on a future episode. But check out the fitting room comes out every Monday. Uh, I'll send this question over to Nate, and we'll get them to uh, to answer it. Uh, Stephen Rogers came out again and asked when the Big Bertha Twenty Ones in stores. It's actually in stores today. Two day. Yes. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's some method in planning to uh, to to our logic, right? Rush out right now. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I got to tell you, I I stole one of the heads the other day. Uh, nine degree yeah um i saw neville went out and did some uh some testing okay and um i have a huge problem with spin uh mm-hmm. mostly because i'm over the top steep uh how many other things could i have wrong with my swing all of them <laughs> but you generate trying to fix it oh, generate so much spin like thousands and thousands of rpm mm-hmm. and spin mm-hmm. so uh i took it out and and the range i play we have limited flight golf balls uh, does not help me with spin that yeah, adds lots yeah, of it yeah. but the, literally from a maverick sub-zero to the BB twenty one, it was almost a thousand RPMs off. Right, same shaft, same. Like we were just popping the mm-hmm. the head on. Mm-hmm. So uh, I unfortunately uh, am playing in the same club championship as Ponce this week, <laughs> and I'm I'm worried. I don't know how many golf balls Chickapee can make because you actually have to finish the holes, and Ponce probably is just going to run out at some point, and you'll just have to quit. Um, but I'm going to put this thing in play this weekend. Nice. And uh, the ball speed for me. Um, on a on a on a quad mm-hmm. with a limited flight ball, mm-hmm. the ball speed was going up four to five miles an hour from Maverick to mm-hmm. Big Bertha twenty one. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you why the jump in ball speed that significant? That is a good question. I mean, uh, limited flight balls are a little bit of a lottery. Um, yeah, but still, <laughs> some of them are really crappy. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, I mean, they're you know, it depending upon uh, how centered your impact is. You know, the the face say in in the new Big Bertha twenty one, a very large face optimized with a, a much sort of greater priority for non-center impact versus say a sub-zero driver which is tended to be optimized for a better player higher head Not speed me. A slightly more centered impact um so i could see why you you'd get some uh, get a signal out of that for sure yeah i'm i'm really excited i, mean, I, I i'm gonna have a hard time the the max three plus mm-hmm. maverick three wood is never coming out of the bag that thing is insane that's pretty good um yeah. for me but but man this driver is is look and my handicap's in the nine range it should be a little higher but the stupid usj system won't let it go up anymore <laughs> um unlike other people whose handicaps i know around this office who are going to the total wrong spots on the other direction um we'll get to that another day but uh i, I will say that the, the feel of this thing is just so good and, mm-hmm. and like i said i i just put it on the exact same shaft i was using yeah. on on the maverick just so i could compare apples to apples yeah. And it was a pretty pretty significant difference. And I think we've had a lot of good feedback um, from those who've had a chance to uh, hit it and see it uh, for real. Um, in that, you know, there's an awful, an awful lot of forgiveness available in this driver. Um, and yeah, at the same time, it doesn't look funky in order to achieve that. And that the finishes on the driver, on the crown and on the sole are, are really premium. So it's a sort of... Uh, forgiving driver that you'd be proud to have in your bag it, it's not one of those that looks like it carries uh sort of training wheels around with it or something like that yeah no no i i trust me i'm i'm as vain as anyone gets about it and i didn't <laughs> feel uh, i feel great about it yeah and uh, the the Sounds look of it too. the look yeah. of it's really the sound is really really good yeah and then when you when you hit it in the dead center we did put the dots on the club to kind of try to see impact location mm-hmm, as you mm-hmm. imagined it was a little scattered the couple that were dead center the feel through it is just just amazing right yeah just amazing well, we've done a lot of work on that. You know, that's one of the sort of lesser talked about um, applications of our AI tools is that we actually engineer the sound of the driver and we can uh, predict the sound very accurately while the uh, prototypes are still in the computer. So we can mm-hmm. refine it um, to a level that, uh, you know, it's probably unexpected. And, and certainly, you know, certain types of drivers represent more sound challenges than others. Those with the sliding weights on them uh, pre- present greater problems than others. Um, and sometimes the shape uh, of the head works counter to the uh, the best sound that we might want to achieve. Uh, but here we've got a, a great blend of all of them. Yeah, for sure. All right. Next question from Matt Lynch. What is the difference between the new hybrid, I'm assuming the new BB21 hybrid, mm-hmm. and the Callaway Super Hybrid? Right. So Super Hybrid was um, sort of a bit of a concept car that uh, that escaped and, uh, you know, um, an all titanium body construction. Um, 
in terms of the face and, and the main part of the body, carbon crown, lots of tungsten used inside of that head for the first time. Um, and it taught us a lot about how to put a lot of tungsten inside a hybrid head and put it in the right places and hold it the right way, um, all of that type of thing. Um, so we've employed some of those techniques in the design of the Big Bertha hybrid. It's not a titanium body, but it mm -hmm. has uh, a stainless steel body with a carbon crown, um, and it doesn't have um, adjustability now that where the super hybrid does. And for that, we can change the body shape. And essentially, I mentioned adjustability because without having adjustability in the Big Bertha, we can um, produce offset in that head in a form that a Callaway hybrid hasn't had before. So to make it more consistent with the offset in the irons, um, which is good for altering the hand to head relationship at impact. And, and people often say that would help uh, reduce the slice a little bit. Um, we've been able to put offset in, in this hybrid um, while still retaining some of the technologies that are in the super hybrid, primarily the large amount of tungsten and, and where we put it and how we hold it. So it's a very, very forgiving uh, f uh, hybrid from the mass properties point of view, you know, the center of gravity position, the moment of inertia, but it has this uh, unique within our range uh, offset arrangement of the, the hosel relative to the face. All right, next one from Kevin Sargent. What are similarities and differences between these new woods and the woods on tour? So I'm assuming that means the Maverick. Mm. Um, mm. So we'll just go with that. Well, so for tour players, we're not so interested in um, draw bias as much. You know, yeah. a lot of the conversation with the tour players uh, comes down to having obviously very good ball speed, but then uh, looking at the the start line of the ball at, um, immediately on departure from the face, and then uh, how the the ball uh, moves, particularly in the final third of the flight, post the mm -hmm. apex of the flight. So. Um, certain players have preferences to see the ball start right, move left, uh, but not move left too hard. You know, Kevin Kisner would be a good example of that. Yeah. Whereas um, a lot of the way that uh, elite players are coached these days, they actually prefer to move the ball a little bit to the right. Uh, certainly a lot of the higher head speed players uh, want to launch the ball neutral or even left of target line and see it fall right. So we have uh, different driver configurations available on tour that promote those different shot shapes that you know, effectively work with the preferences of the player versus the player having to fight against uh, a certain characteristic of the driver. Um, so that's done a pretty high level of refinement for tour players. Uh, something like Big Bertha, we're, we're saying, you know, a lot of our data on amateur players suggests that there is a predominant issue that we're trying to def design for. So we've put a lot more of that specific, uh, um, those in ingredients into this head, uh, probably different from what you need on tour. Yeah, for sure. And that all, that all makes total sense. So hopefully, Kevin, that answered your question. You know, look, I think that's the key here to this whole Big Bertha B21 line. This is not for tour pros. And right. if we see one or two of them out there, that, that still doesn't make it a tour pro yeah, club. Yeah, that won't, that won't be a big surprise, but yeah. it's not designed uh, with those, you know, with that interaction. We have ongoing dialogue with our tour players uh, throughout the year about our current products, about the next generation. And their feedback is genuinely what drives the the characteristics of those clubs that that isn't really the sort of feedback that has gone into a big bertha that it's been more a lot of uh, amateur players that have been invited into our performance center uh, data that we've looked at from fitbays that we own and operate around the world as well okay next question here from penny in alabama did you realize doc i just did my 600th ride on the peloton i've only posted it 78 places and you haven't commented on it <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> yeah. Did you see Penny Rotor 600th, in case anyone didn't know? I did not know. Congratulations, Congratulations Penny. Penny. You're a few, yeah. uh, a few hundred ahead of me. Yeah, but your output's way ahead of all of us. Well, I, I, you, you, well you kind of tick me off on the bike, because when I get on the bike, um, you know, there's all these different hashtags, mm -hmm. and, and I created the Callaway Golf hashtag, mm -hmm. and I think it's me, you, and Cliff. <laughs> I uh, e Ethan hasn't even joined it. Pe or maybe Penny joined it. And I go in there, and I see Callaway, and I'm saying, oh, who's there in there? I'm like, oh, Doc rode this one. Then I look, and I'm like halfway through the ride, and, and um, mm. you at halfway are are higher than my uh, personal best. <laughs> so, 
But well, I'm doing this eight-week challenge on it. Uh, did you see the new bike came out? I did see that, yeah. Did, did you order one yet? No. Big yeah. upgraded screen and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but it swivels. Yeah. I, see, in the room that I have my Peloton in, which is the garage, yep. uh, I have a TV out there. So yep. like when I get off the bike and I want to do the other stuff, I just put it on the TV. Mm. So I, I don't I'm, have a spare TV, but if you rotate well, a you can Peloton get a spare TV. screen in my garage, you'd collide with some paint cans. So. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the other issue is if I rotated it, I would be like in, in my car. Yeah, right. like, like There's not a lot of room. The, uh, the the Peloton in the garage, I think, is an underrated move, except for these last couple of weeks, it's been tough. It's pretty steamy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I rode here. 45 minutes last night, and it was 90-something in the garage. Right. It was not, it was not exactly fun. Yeah, yeah, I got another one tonight, mm-hmm. uh, this eight-week challenge. Uh, we're here with Alan Hocknell, head of R&D. We're going to do a couple more minutes, so send your questions in right now on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter. You can ask Doc anything. What's the uh, strangest question when you've been on one of these road tours or something that people have asked you about a golf club? Oh, gosh. Um, I think a lot of people uh, are interested in just exactly where do, where do we get inspiration for certain things? And sometimes that's a really difficult question to, to answer. You know, it's my job to uh, try and gather the, the right insights on product from the outside world and match them to our technology ideas that we're incubating uh, inside from a uh, materials or uh, artificial intelligence or analysis or other uh, point of view, uh, sometimes new construction methods as well. Um, so people sort of say, well, how do you keep coming up with ideas for stuff? And uh, sometimes I don't have a great answer for that because it it's a sort of organic process. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not always clearly, it's not just me, you know, we have a team of over 100 people. And, and we find that uh, inspiration for things can come from a great variety of, of sources. You know, so I like to stay connected to the sales team, the marketing team, the tour team. Um, and, uh, you know, that that helps us with, with feedback. Uh, I was saying we invite a lot of people into the Performance Center as well, and we hear their anecdotes about what works and what doesn't. Um, so, yeah, in terms of a, a hard question I, keep, I get asked every once in a while, it's just a... a I can't quite describe how we do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just kind of happens. But it's sort of, uh, it's a it's an interesting um, soup that we keep on the boil, I feel like. Yeah. Um, what, what I always find it funny is every February or March, probably more into March, I'll get a series of text message from, from friends and they'll be like, oh, you guys did it. It, it can't ever get better. It can't mm-hmm. be done. There's mm-hmm. no shot. And then fast forward one year, Groundhog Day, oh, you did it again. It's even better, <laughs> whatever. To, does that scare you ever? Do you ever come out with a product and then sit around in March going like, Huh? How how are we gonna improve that? Or, or do you look at each one as like yeah. every time you get it to the finish line? Whenever I don't want to tell people when you put the pencil down. Finally, you're mm. always like, God, if I had another month, I could do these two things, mm. and then that ends up going into the next version that you're already starting on. Yeah, I think um, in any given year, the the scariest day for me is the day after our sales meeting. So that usually occurs in around September for products mm-hmm. that are going to launch. Uh, whoa, whoa in, September. It, yeah, hello. Uh-oh. Yeah, I guess, I guess some of us have to get more working on that. <laughs> um, you know, for products that will launch in the in the first quarter of the following year, mm-hmm. um, and at that state, uh, you know, the the generation of products that come after the ones that we're talking about there are usually only still uh, on the drawing board. So that's the, one of the scariest days of the year that you think. Oh heck, we've got 365 days, and we've got to be back here. Do you um, have a? Do you, there, there was the show that Matthew Perry did. It was the parody of Saturday Night Live, where um, hmm. I can't remember the name of the show. I can't. I'm blanking out. But where the countdown clock, so they would get off the air with a two hour <laughs> show, and it literally would say six days, 22 hours, <laughs> you know, 30 minutes, whatever. And it was, I always kind of live that because when I was doing daily TV, it yeah. was like, all right, we're done at nine o'clock in the morning. Okay, we have 20. Two hours till we have to do another two hours, and it's just like right. it's kind of kind of gets defeated sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's where uh, we've got to be pretty resilient, and we believe in a lot of the design theories that we've followed recently, and uh, we believe in the manufacturing capability that we've established to make those become real. Uh, believed in the quality of the product that we've been uh, mm-hmm. able to achieve as well. Um, so. You know, with with all of that infrastructure behind us, it's about feeding it with with great ideas that are, have the right connection to players. Mm-hmm. All right, Tom Beck wants to know what Callaway ball is good for a slower club speed. Oh, um, how slow? Yeah. <laughs> right. So let's give him a couple options because I think you're going to go super soft potentially. So yeah, you know, um, if you're the kind of player who um, 
uh, doesn't uh, rely on a lot of spin around the green, let's say, to play your short game, then a super soft ball is fantastic. So uh, relatively low compression, and for that, you uh, a slow swing speed, you'll get relatively high speed, you'll get benefits of low spin, which is good for distance, mm -hmm. good for straightness. Also, if you don't hit the center of the face regularly, low compression is good because you still kind of compress the ball when you don't hit the center of the face. So you still get forgiveness, if you like, from your golf ball. Uh, you get great iron distance. Um, so, you know, where you might misclub yourself or not make perfect contact and normally would come up short, uh, you actually do make it onto the green. Um, so a super soft ball is fantastic for, for that type of thing. If you play with a bit more spin in, in your uh, short game, you want to hit some of those uh, lower launching, higher spinning, checking type of shots around the green. Uh, and you, you like the fun scoring capability of that, then uh, choose the Chrome Soft Golf Ball. It's a tour quality golf ball with a urethane cover, um, very soft cover on a soft construction golf ball. Uh, gives you many of the benefits I just talked about with Super Soft uh, and this ad additional benefit of playing a, a sort of more exciting game around the green. Yeah, so what I always tell people to do is grab a sleeve of each. Mm -hmm. uh, also grab a sleeve of the Magna. Super soft yeah. magna, yeah. Um, especially because again, I, we don't really know what your swing speed is. Uh, grab a sleeve of each of those and then just go, you know, play late in the day. Don't yeah. hold people up and hit each ball on the same hole and then see the differences Absolutely. and then see, oh, one may be better off the driver, one may be better around the green. Yeah. And then you get to make some choices. Yeah. And if, um, you know, if you have a uh, slow swing speed, sometimes uh, keeping the ball in the air long enough mm -hmm. is a challenge by not launching mm -hmm. it high enough. So that's where a, a magna ball would come in. Yeah. Um, the, probably the easiest ball in the world to launch uh, and keep in the air. And uh, for that, time in the air is distance for a lot of players who have yeah. slower swings. And uh, it's remarkable uh, what a difference that can make for the right type of player. Yeah, I'm not an R&D person, but time in the air also gets it over uh, hazards. Exactly. <laughs> can't, can't hit a ball through the water a lot of times. Right. Over it's probably the way. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, like a, uh, like a Peloton instructor likes to say, we make suggestions, you make decisions. <laughs> so uh, get on out there and go try the three different golf balls and then... Uh, why don't you write back to us? That was Dennis Morton quote. There. It was. Yeah. It was. All right. Uh, Matthew O'Malley. Uh, hey. Hey, Matthew. Are you guys thinking of updating Apex 19 with the a a uh, AI technology? That's an interesting idea. Mm. I hadn't thought of it. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Interesting. You know that. That's uh, uh, something that you might consider would be uh, something we're thinking about. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> There's no reason not to think about it. Right. We've got a, a fantastic, unique tool there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, why wouldn't we try and explore how to yeah. use it for all sorts yeah. of products? Yeah. I can tell you that uh, the only time I ever change irons are Apex. Mm -hmm. I feel bad because everyone, like I know so many people who are loving the Maverick irons. I've, I've never hit them. Mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. I just don't, I don't switch. Mm -hmm. Finley dialed me into specs. I use, yeah. I use, literally I use the same, I use what's in Jason Finley's bag. I mean, why wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, is there, is there anyone better to replicate in the game of golf? <laughs> So. Jace is pretty good. He is. Very good. And consistent. he hits his great irons. So I want to hit irons yeah. like him. So I just use the exact same thing. All right. Last thing I want to talk to you about, if you'll let me, is uh, you recently, one of the things I love about R&D team yeah. is you guys are golfers. Yes. And I think that's important. I think a lot of people in the marketing team are golfers. Yes. Um, you recently got to play some golf at a place I've still never been uh, uh, and a brand new golf course. Can you give me a mm -hmm. quick review of uh, Sheep Ranch? Yeah. So we spent uh, a few days up at Ben and Dunes and we played Sheep Ranch a couple of times. We played it. Uh, in the afternoon wind and we played it slightly calmer the next day in the morning um, fantastic what a fun golf course um, so many holes right at the ocean and then those that they're, they're little inland have their own uh, kind of unique qualities uh, difficulties and, and sort of uh, visual uh, interests themselves so we had, a, we had a great time around there um, in the wind, you know, the back nine plays pretty tough because in the summer, the wind blows north to south and mm -hmm. you pretty much find yourself on the 10th tee at the furthest point from the from the clubhouse pretty much. So the, the back nine can be a, a bit of a struggle with the uh, the final holes, uh, two or three of them right on the water there. Um, but we had a, a tremendous amount of fun there. The caddies were awesome and trying yeah. to coach us around the place. And they, they do uh, make a difference to the experience that you have overall. Um, so, uh, I'd, I'd recommend it to anybody. What a fun golf course. Yeah. Never been up to Bandon. It's, uh, when I lived on the East coast, it seemed impossible. Mm. And now that I live here, it's very possible. And I just, I just haven't got it together. Maybe I'll try to grab the guy on the other side of that wall. Maybe try to do a, uh, abandoned trip. I think you should do something. All right. Uh, that is all the time we have for today. Cause okay. you have another meeting you need to get to. Ah, uh, that's yeah. what Carol's texting me. Like why, why is he still, no, she's not. But it just, <laughs> if she did, we would listen. Um, <laughs> 
Plus, I got to mention Carol and Penny in the same podcast. That's pretty exciting for me. Um, anyway, thanks for, thanks, spending, uh, for spending some time with us. Yeah. If, you, if your question didn't get answered, um, leave it, or if you're not watching it live and you're listening to this recorded, send your question in, either comment in the, in, in the video on YouTube um, or on Facebook, mm-hmm. and, and Jen will get the questions collected, and we'll just email them to you, and then we can try to get some answers to everybody. We want to answer yeah. your questions, and we will. Absolutely. Um, but get it. Get, go to the fitting bay. Go try uh, the B twenty one. I was a little surprised how much I liked it. I'll mm-hmm. be honest with you, because mm-hmm. uh, you know I heard uh, about thirty different presentations where you guys were saying this was Charles Barkley's driver, <laughs> yeah. and I don't want to be Charles Barkley, <laughs> but I don't know. And I think though, you know, when we're designing a club that's got these sort of characteristics for this type of golfer, it's the sort of golfer where we can almost make the largest uh, change in performance, and that's the sort of delighter factor for for uh, that we're looking for you know we can see we get a kick out of that as you said we're golfers we want to help golfers so to see somebody come in with a persistent problem and find a club from within a fitting experience that absolutely solves uh, a major issue for them and they can take that out on the course with uh, with confidence and play a game that's sort of transformed as a result yeah. I mean we can make that sort of difference that that puts a smile on our face that's almost a bigger difference than we can make for tour players yeah um, so uh, Fully encourage people to go in, yeah. try them, and uh, you'll see the benefits. Yeah, I'll leave it with this. They're gorgeous. They're full of tons of technology. you got to go out and try them. Uh, and that's what you should be spending your weekend doing. Well, mm-hmm. I'm going to put them in play in the club championship. I'll report nice. uh, to you next week how I do. Um, the only thing I'm a little worried about is that left at my place is dead on like 16 or 17 holes, and these do have a left start line. <laughs> but I think what I'm going to try to do is aim at the right edge of the fairway and just try to try to swing really, really hard and Trust hit bombs. Yeah, yeah, and just hit bombs and try to try to get it in there. Mm. So thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everybody, for listening and watching on the Callaway Golf Podcast. We're going to be back next week. Lex and I are going to talk with someone about the U.S. Open. Uh, I haven't told her who that is yet because I don't know. <laughs> but we'll figure that out. Uh, we'll give you an update how uh, BB21 performed for me. Uh, and then in a couple weeks, uh, we're going to have Nick McAnally on the show he hasn't done the show since he's been over here oh, um very and, timely. and yeah, yeah so we we need to have him there's a, a major investigation about his handicap going on that i'm yeah. leading uh because it affects me in in a potential competition <laughs> so uh we're going to get into that in a couple weeks with nick but we're gonna try to do these a little more regular i know we've been a little sporadic uh things have been a little crazy around here so thanks everybody for listening and we'll see you next time on the callaway golf podcast All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Very good. Our mic still may be live, so we'll won't say anything.